Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit here from PAX East 2013. I'm here with Christopher Ray from NVIDIA. You know what this is? Yeah, you probably figured it out by now. This is NVIDIA's Shield. This is the form factor being shown off by the wonderful Christopher Ray right there. <laughs> Isn't he beautiful? So, we're going to go in depth on Shield. I spoke a lot about this on Content Patch. I spoke about how it was an exciting idea and also my reservations about it. So, we're going to grill Chris on this and we're going to show you as much of this as we can. So, let's open that up and see what we've got going on here. So, you'll notice a game you're probably pretty familiar with on my screen. He's going to turn his on. And then we're suddenly going to realize it's going to run out of batteries or something along those lines, <laughs> doesn't it? We've been, we've been holding, setting up a camera positioning for like 30 minutes. It went to sleep. All right, so we're just waking that up. In the meantime, you'll see that is Skyrim. So that's being streamed off a machine over the wireless LAN here. This is, of course, one of the primary features of the machine, the ability to use an NVIDIA card to encode the game, stream the video out, and then play it. So the latency is a concern that we had, and we're going to be testing that out. It also is a machine with Tegra 4, which Tegra is 4, right? your new Beastie mobile GPU and CPU. I suppose you call it an APU right now, don't you? Or you know, we, we, we haven't necessarily uh, branded or labeled it like that, but with 4i, you know, it, you're going to get amazing performance. It's got a quad-core processor with a stealth core in it so that when you go into minimized applications or light web browsing, what it'll do is actually just go to that stealth core so you're not draining your whole battery. Also, it's got 72 GPU cores on it. I mean, if you look back eight years, you, nothing had that, so... That is very, very true indeed. So we will be showing you Tegra 4 Gaming as well. So those are going to be the two primary features that we'll be looking at here. But we'll also be looking at the form factor, which is kind of a, a fairly important thing to do. As we just realized, I think that one is now most likely out of batteries, but yep. we'll be able to swap that over. We'll get the unit swapped out. Yeah, so this is kind of what it looks like. Now, you saw it closed earlier. So this is a clamshell design on a full-size controller, which looks something like that. Got two thumbsticks. You've got your bumpers and triggers. You also have a fully functional D-pad. It's essentially very similar to an Xbox 360 controller, except both of the controls are at the bottom, so it's got the PS3-style analog stick layout. D-pad's kind of in the position you'd expect it to be, and full-size buttons, actually surprisingly large buttons here. Yeah, you know, we have a lot of adult gamers. We wanted to ensure that when they have the chance to play with Project Shield, that it's going to feel comfortable and the buttons are going to be tactile and they can find them. That's always useful. Identifying, I think it was the original 3DS. I find myself in pain after the first 20 minutes. So it tends to happen. I have big hands, so that could be a problem. All right, well, currently, we are running PC streaming. So let's talk about it. Yep. Definitely. We will be looking more in depth after this. Don't worry. It's like, why are you showing the games? We're going to show you the games. We're going to reposition, and in part two of this, we'll have the camera over the shoulder, and we'll be showing you more of it. So in the meantime, let's talk about this. So currently, I'd say we're running Skyrim. Now, I believe this is st streaming off a PC running a GeForce Titan. This is running off a GeForce GTX Titan, correct? Yep. Uh, Project Shield will work with everything down to about a 660. You're going to get a really good experience. Okay. All right. So first things first, we've got a, a couple of sort of freezes every now and again. Now, you did mention that this was across wireless LAN. What kind of experience could people expect on the home LAN rather than a convention where Absolutely. it's being saturated completely? Yeah, the bandwidth here is completely saturated. Um, and at home, on your private uh, network, you're going to get a really good experience. To be honest with you, if you were to put Project Shield right next to the screen of the computer that is rendering and streaming out the game, you're not going to be able to tell a difference. The latency is phenomenal. Now, funnily enough, we'll actually be able to show that a little bit later because it's running on that machine right over there. Yes, sir. So we will see whether or not Christopher Ray is telling porkies. Now, currently, as I'm playing it, I'm noticing a freeze every now and again, but responsiveness is actually surprisingly good. I'm not noticing any obvious latency. I think I almost set half these NPCs on fire, which was probably not a very good idea. Skyrim, not a game that I'm particularly used to playing a huge amount of, and I think I'll probably set the village on fire. It could end up happening here. All, all the security guards will come mob you. Yeah, that, that will actually happen. The PAX enforcers <laughs> are linked directly into this game <laughs> as it stands. So the streaming technology that you're talking about right here, mm -hmm. we, we've had streaming tech before in the form of stuff like OnLive. Yes. Now, am I right in thinking that this will basically stream anything or are there some limitations? You know, I've tried over 30 games just streaming it in, uh, directly to the device, and I haven't had any issues yet. Uh, everything's worked just fine. Now, this works a little bit differently than something like OnLive, which is a cloud-based service, which is going to stream games to you from a server somewhere else in the world. Yep. The way Project uh, Shield streaming works is that the, your computer is the local server. It's connected directly to your router. 
So it is literally outputting a signal to the Wi-Fi in your house. So you're not pulling it down from the cloud or anything like that. And that's how we're able to get such low latencies because the server's in your house um, and it's running off your router. Um, on top of that, the, the Tegra 4i processor uh, has an encoder built into it, which allows the signal that's coming from the PC to be immediately decoded without really having to use a lot of the processor. So you actually get really good battery life when you are streaming. Um, it actually gets a little bit better battery life than Android gaming, because Android gaming is actually using the full uh, bulk of the Tegra yeah, 4i processor. Yeah, that's actually a fair point. I was guessing that because you're not really just using all of the cores there, you're not using the processing power, it's being done, it's being offloaded to another device. Correct. That yeah, you do get better battery life. Uh, battery life in these units, is that representative of the final product, or are you looking to make a few improvements there? You know, these are these are still beta units. These are not final. Um, we are getting really close. Uh, we're always making refinements as soon as, in, as close as we get uh, to launch. Fair enough. So right now, uh, what's your experience being on the convention floor where people have been hammering on these things? How long have they been lasting? Uh, you know, on the show floor, we, with streaming, we've been getting about six hours. If you're doing things like normal web browsing, video watching, and things like that, you're going to get up to ten. Right. Uh, with the Tegra games, you'll get a little bit less because it is using the full brunt of the Tegra processor. Fair enough. Okay. So uh, Skyrim is running surprisingly well. Obviously, you are running analog sticks here. Now, my personal impression of these sticks is actually some of the most comfortable sticks I've been using, which was a big concern. Funnily enough, I tried a few Android controllers that use a kind of similar method to this, mm -hmm. using, you know, kind of just clamping it in. It's got like a latch on top. Yeah, and yeah. it was the worst experience I've ever had. It was absolutely dreadful. In this case, these sticks actually feel really nice. You have concaved slightly. Thank God yes. someone has the common sense to do that. And that works really well. You've got these big buttons here and the triggers. They're not full size, but they're close enough. So you can see sort of my position of my fingers right here when I'm playing. That's where my fingers would be on the triggers. That's where my fingers would be on the bumpers. They're pretty close to the screen, but not close enough to actually be a problem. Yep. So that's always good for the form factor there. Also notice you've got a couple of uh, fairly large silver speakers in the front there. Actually, I want to touch on the speakers. Those are not yeah. just direct speakers on the top of the surface of the device. The speakers are actually inside the device, and we have tuned audio ports that come up to the top of the device. So that way the audio that you're going to get is not just some speaker raw blaring sound uh, out of the device. It's going to be actually really crisp and really clean. Obviously, we can't really kind of give you the full experience through these microphones, but we're trying our best. Yeah, it's, it's a little challenging to... Uh, properly show the audio quality on the show floor because it's so it's loud so freaking loud it's anyway loud. yeah exactly so how the hell do you do that but it makes sense now port wise something to look at right here let's look at the back so we have a couple of nice little ports here we have that's mini hdmi we also have usb and a headphone jack i'm, I'm giving jen a nightmare here with the camera she's doing a fantastic <laughs> job so thank you very much she's for the best camera work this is like our first event doing like lots of camera work so yeah it's it's, it's going pretty well, but you see the ports on the back. So HDMI out. This thing can kick out full 1080p, I assume. This yeah? will output 4K. Right. So 4K video, which is coming. For those of you rich enough to own a 4K television, I hate you. But <laughs> one way or the other, you will be able to kick out 4K video. Gaming from streaming, of course, 1080p. Yes. And Tegra games, obviously, I think that's, that's got to vary based on the game, right? Absolutely. Some of them are 1080p. Some of them aren't. Right. The ones that we optimize for Tagger 4, we're trying to get the highest resolutions possible. Yeah. Resolution-wise, actually, this screen. Now, we're using the term retina, which I, I kind of hate. Because retinol. Retinol. All right. That's the way you get around <laughs> the lawsuits. Excellent. <laughs> a retinol display. The principle of a retinol display, folks, is that they basically shove more pixels in there yes. than would technically be necessary for a screen of that size. What that means is the closer you get, the less pixel it actually is, because the pixel density is very, very high. Yep. So it's a fairly small-ish screen, not, ab not abusively small. You know, it doesn't strain your eyes. I can read the text on Skyrim, which is kind of surprising, because that was pretty small to begin yeah. with. So that's not too difficult. But I mean, honestly, like, color vibrance is pretty damn good here. It's a nice-looking screen. And, and it's full touch. Yeah, it is. Not that I would use it in any way for Skyrim, but <laughs> I, that's kind of the first thing I like to ask about, really. So sure. full touch on a device where the controller is down here. Mm -hmm. So how would you hold this if you wanted to use the touch screen? That's a good question. Um, the more we get involved with the device, the more we learn and develop on it, uh, the more we're able to work with developers to create unique control schemes between touch and tactile controls. Okay. So it's something that we're continually working on with the developers. Um, and a lot of times what you'll see is there will be some, uh, some, some menu options or just shortcuts that you can quickly touch on the screen. Yeah. So you know, you can, you're going from here and you just pull a hand up and you, know, you can quickly pause or 
or maybe access an inventory yeah. menu. Yeah, so you're looking for you're looking for quick touch. So because you can you can hold this in one hand, it's not that heavy. Yeah. You know, I've been holding this for good like, good 30, 45 minutes. It hasn't tired my arms out yet, and I don't even lift. So just bear <laughs> that in mind. And a, a qu kind of quick touch control, uh -huh. kind of on the screen, and then back to the main controls is sort of what you're looking for here. Rather than you're not really looking for full touch control games on this machine, I would assume. Um, you know, there will be some, but the, with our main goal is to ensure that the controller, controller is mapped works. to every game. Yes, which does kind of seem like the best way to handle it, honestly. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it, would, it would be difficult. You know, I'm trying to think of how this would possibly work out. I did actually manage to do something there. <laughs> I uh, think you might have bumped one of the bumpers. Yeah, yeah, they're actually quite sensitive, surprisingly so, which yeah. is not a terrible thing. Now, I know I touched the screen. I saw, uh, there's a little keyboard layout down the bottom. Uh, yeah, it, it, will, it will pop up, and there is a, phys uh, uh, a, uh, a virtual keyboard that you can get to pop up. Um, not all the games have those hooks built into them yet. Um, what you're going to notice is that on PC games, they're really mapped for standard controller layouts. Yeah. And then on a lot of the Android games, since most Android games are on tablets or phones, yeah. those are going to have touch controls. Yeah, okay, that's, that's pretty damn understandable as far as I'm concerned. So one of the features actually on Project Shield, and this is part of where the name came from, is actually this lid that comes off. Okay. And so it's got a couple clasps and some magnets in it. And essentially what you have the ability to do is in the future you'll be able to get customized clasps on top of your Project Shield so that you can make yours unique. And it literally just, it's a magnet and it just pops right back on top. Nice. Excellent. Now, I mean, it feels like a very rugged unit. It yep. feels like the kind of thing I could probably throw around, which I'm not going to do. Yeah, please video do not drop it. Yeah, it's like, oh. <laughs> no, but it, it seems pretty rugged. Like, it's it's solid. It's solidly built in every way. Yes. It's got a good weight to it that's not too heavy. So touching on the weight, it, this device is really all about balance. Um, our engineers did an amazing job of, of designing the PCB where the processor is in, in relations to the layout of the batteries on the inside. So we have three massive batteries on the inside of this device that are centrally located around the PCB and the center of the unit here. Um, and so what that does is when you flip open the lid, the device is really well balanced and you're not getting the, ma the majority of the weight in one spot. And that's one of the reasons why it's so comfortable to hold and you don't really get that strain in your hands or arms. Yeah, it actually does work and I'm kind of surprised by that. And it does help, of course, that it's like using a 360 pad. Slightly bigger, not by much. So the way that you hold it is kind of exactly the way that you would hold a regular controller, which is in itself kind of comfortable. And it's this curious melding of the 360 and PlayStation 3 controller there, which seems to work pretty well. All right, so these buttons in the center right here, the shield button, I believe, is what access to the operating system. Can we push that? Uh, on this one, it'll actually pull you out of the game demo. I want to ask that you don't do that, sure. just because we, we, after this interview, we do have to pull more people in. And it, it, in this environment on the Wi-Fi, it takes a couple don't seconds break to get it, things synced up. In other words, up. yeah. yeah we want to that will give you access to the OS, so that, that's where you can essentially... It's, like, it's basically Android, right? Yeah, and what we can do is when we go into the Android section of, of uh, the interview, we can show you with the HUD and all that stuff. But basically Absolutely. what that is, that's your gaming dashboard. It's where you're going to access your Android games, it's where you're going to access your Tegra games, and it's where you're going to access the hub for PC streaming. All right, fantastic stuff. Okay, so a couple of questions for you here. Uh, let's get into the idea of who buys this. So it's got a lot of cool tech. Mm -hmm. It seems like you're aiming at PC gamers. NVIDIA obviously has been doing that for a while. Over 20 years now. Yep, <laughs> that's a while. That's a while. So how would you sell this to a primarily PC gamer who's sitting on their machine that's got a GTX Titan in it and said, I game on a PC, so why do I need to own a Shield? Sure. I'm sure you sat at your computer and played for hours, and there comes a point where you're like, wow, I've been sitting in this chair for seven hours. My butt hurts. My lower back hurts. I wish I was on my couch, or I want to go relax in bed. This device really allows you to play anywhere in your house and experience full quality PC games. So you can play, like Skyrim, what you're playing right now is yeah. running on ultra settings, and it's actually 1080p on the system, but it's, it's, it is downscaling the resolution to 720 on the device. Yeah. So you can get full quality PC gaming, physics, you know, all that stuff on Project Shield, and you can play it anywhere in your house with a really comfortable experience. Yeah, your PC kind of becomes a mothership in that regard, so it, it's kind of streaming your devices out. It does. And I think that seems to be the way that a lot of stuff is going, actually. We're hearing about streaming boxes all over the house using already existing powerful PC hardware rather than buying more powerful mm -hmm. PC hardware in order to make this kind of thing actually work. Absolutely. Now, do you think that a lot of PC gamers are really going to be willing to switch to controller rather than mouse and keyboard? 
I think it's a nice supplement. I okay. think it, it's it's a good experience to be able to play a, a wider range of games. You know, the message that we're really trying to convey to gamers this weekend is it's all about open platform gaming. Whether you want to play Android or Tegra or PC games, this device will support it all, and we want to make sure that what we help produce is open for gaming. Okay. Fair enough. Now, do you, what are your hopes with Android? Because you pointed out earlier that games for tablets, primarily designed for touchscreens, they're also kind of dumb, most of them, which there is unfortunate. There are actually some really good ones out there. There's a game called Conduit that we've been showcasing over here on, yep. a, on a tablet, um, and they have some really unique aiming mechanics, and it was it's very impressive. You should definitely go over and check it out. We'll definitely have a look at it. But are you hoping to encourage more hardcore game development as a result of the system existing? You know, we have an awesome development team, a developer relations team that focuses specifically on Android, Tegra, and working with developers. And they are always working with developers to try and help push mobile games to the next level. I mean, you have seen the kind of the evolution over the last six months to a year where the mobile games have gone from something that is, you know, not necessarily um, top quality all the way to things that look like PS3 or Xbox 360 quality now. So we're, we're bridging that gap, and you're really starting to see the fidelity and the quality and playability of those games come up. And that's because of the close work and relationships that we have with those developers. All right, that makes perfect sense. I think that kind of leads us to the end of the questions regarding form factor, things like that. Obviously, you guys haven't released a price yet, so that's not something we can really discuss. But I can't imagine you're going to be targeting like the $1,500 range with this thing. We're going to try to make it as reasonable as possible. All right, yeah, that's about as far as we're going to get in terms of that information before, this, before we get kind of closer to release with it. All right, so... What we're going to do is we're going to sort of switch our perspective around. We're going to show you a bit more gameplay. We're going to try and show you some Android. We'll show you some streaming. And we're going to show you streaming versus the machine that's actually doing the streaming. This will allow you to do a direct comparison, bearing in mind, of course, that this is very busy con Wi-Fi, not your clean home Wi-Fi. So there will be a little bit of stuttering here and there. But, it, you know, if this is, wor this is good test. This is worst case conditions, yes. right? So... This is what they're going to show you. They're going to show you worst-case conditions, and then you can extrapolate from there. So we're going to switch around, folks, and we will be right back. <laughs> 